Right, I'll start by apologising for my monotone voice, which almost makes Miss McNeil sound quite interesting. The first unit we're going to look at is lithosphere, and we're going to look at glaciation. Some of you obviously studied National 5 geography and have a background knowledge, some of you won't, so we're just going to go right back to the beginning. 10,000 years ago, the Ice Age ended. Basically, the whole of the UK, apart from the most southern part, was covered in ice. This ice actually shaped the landscape that we have today. So if anybody's been at Aviemore and the Cairngorms, that mountain range and the scenery there was created by the ice. And from the ice, glaciers were formed. And basically, glaciers form in areas where there's permanent snow all year round called snowfields. Now, snowfields occur at high latitudes due to the lapse rate. So, for every 100 metres higher you go, the temperature decreases by 0 0.6 degrees Celsius. Yep. It also happens in northern latitudes, closer to the poles, as those in National 5 know that that affects weather and makes it colder. And north-facing slopes, that, because they don't get any direct sunlight, and that's why if you're buying a house, or you've heard of somebody buying a house, most people would like a south-facing garden so they can top up their tan. So, glacier forms through the repetition of snow falling. And then as snow falls on top of the last year's snow, it starts to squeeze the air out of it. Yep, And as the air is squeezed out of it, it becomes more compact and solid, forming navy. Yep. Over 30 to 40 years, this process repeats, and then we've got glacial ice forming. This glacial ice, yep, is very similar to if you're making a snowball, and the more you squeeze and compress it, the more solid it becomes. It starts to turn into ice, and that's the process that the glacier takes. Now, because of the weight of the ice, it can start to move downhill because of its weight and gravity. Now most of you should know that ice is solid, so this huge solid river of ice actually moves down a hill, and it does that through gravity, internal, internal deformation, which is each ice crystal that can actually slide across each other. Basal melting, yep, what happens is, Due to the friction at the bottom of the glacier, the ice begins to melt, and then that lubricates the rock, allowing the glacier to slide much easier. Yep, and there you can see a picture of a glacier. Now, these glaciers can be huge. They can be up to one mile thick. So, there is three zones in a glacier. There's a zone of accumulation, which is where the nevi builds up, and we get features like cirques or quarries, arets and pyramidal peaks and as the process, process of frost shattering occurs here and we're going to look at that uh, later on. They've got the zone of flow which is where the glacier actually moves Yep, and there's more processes and there's other features there that we're going to look at in the next couple of videos and then there's a zone of ablation which is where the glacier melts and evaporation occurs and we're going to look at that further in this unit. So what I'd like you to do is copy this diagram down. The glacier needs input, so your precipitation is your snow. You have avalanches, which add snow onto the different layers. And then as the glacier moves, you've got outputs through evaporation. You've got icebergs breaking off the front of the glacier. And you've got meltwater, where the glacier begins to melt. Previously in the video, I mentioned... Uh, in the zone of accumulation, in the zone of flow, different processes, so frost shattering, we've got plucking and abrasion. These erode away the landscape of the glacier. All right. I'm going to apologise because there's a couple of quite terrible diagrams coming up. So freeze thaw is when melted water from the snow collects in cracks and creeps in the rocks above a glacier. Now at night, as the temperature gets colder, this water freezes. Yep, so when water freezes, it expands, so that makes the crack slightly bigger. Now this process repeats itself, yep, over and over, and then eventually the rock shatters and we're left with sharp, angular piece of rock called scree, and we'll see that demonstrated 
in the next diagram. Now I did warn you my diagrams were terrible, but this simple diagram very simply explains what is going on with frost shattering. So we can see that the water fills the cracks and crevices overnight, the temperature drops and it freezes. As the temperatures increases, the water melts, but the cracks expand slightly, and over time, eventually, these sharp angular pieces of rock break off. Yep, pluck in is when glacier light melts due to friction. Yep, so it melts onto the side of the mountain. Eventually, when temperatures drop, it will freeze onto it, and then as the glacier begins to move, it pulls out, it plucks out loose pieces of, of rock. You can imagine it as somebody plucking their eyebrows. Again, another terrible diagram, but hopefully this kind of demonstrates in simple form exactly how plucking occurs. Abrasion is like the sandpaper effect, yep. So any rocks that are plucked off or picked up underneath the glacier, yep, as the glacier moves, these rocks act like sandpaper and smooth and deepen uh, the valley. Yep. And then rocks that can't be moved are scratched, portions smoothed, and eventually they're worn away. If you imagine you're sanding down a piece of wood, this process of abrasion is very, very similar. Again, another terrible diagram, but this is demonstrating that as the rocks underneath the glacier abrade, the valley gets deeper. Yep. And on certain rocks you can see striation marks, so these scratches indicate that there's rocks under the glacier that are being dragged along. All right. Now a couple of tasks for you to do, and then hopefully you'll move on to the next video and you'll have learned something.